Welcome to the Appliance Educator Podcast, presented by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath, attainable luxury designed in Lake Tahoe. Today, we're talking to Chris and Christy Thompson about the building of their new food truck, Medley Food Co. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Appliance Educator Podcast. Today, I'm joined with Chris and Christy Thompson, who are joining us to discuss food trucks and the home kitchen and all these awesome projects they have going on. And I've also got my buddy from the Appliance Educator channel, Nick, joining hey, us as well. What's going on? Yeah. Chris, Christy, welcome. Thank you for the time Hi. today. Thank Good morning. You. Thank you for having us. Well, we're really excited to have you, and I think we kind of want to dive right into it. Um, you guys were talking about some awesome stuff going on with the new food truck. Um, where'd you guys get the idea of building a food truck? It sounds a little cliche, but it's actually kind of always been a dream of mine and now ours. Um, we have three pretty young children, so doing any kind of brick and mortar right now would be very challenging. And with a food truck, you know, we can run it how it fits our schedule and open it when we want to and close it when we want to and it still leaves us room for business and camping so pretty much it's kind of how it was born that's awesome so the flexibility was really the big appeal of it flexibility definitely yeah and it's a minimal investment you know in comparison Uh, yeah being a restaurant designer and and knowing what an equipment package costs what build out costs and a brick and mortar for what we wanted to do i mean we were at 20 percent, if that of you know all in cost which we can sell if we wanted to and walk away from it so uh, we did have a great event last night. We're both a little tired this morning. Yeah, but... no plans to sell in any time. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. That's for not, sure. not with last night. Saying that uh, cost was like a big factor, can you walk through kind of just the decision-making process of how a food truck compares to like a restaurant plan? Uh, well, the thing about a food truck is you still have to have a depot kitchen. So you still have to have some place to go dump your gray water, get your fresh water, prep all your, you know, all of your meats and vegetables you're not really supposed to be prepping on the truck so uh, you still have to have a brick and mortar but again the flexibility of of not having to have that full investment right off the bat was nice um, kind of letting somebody else foot the bill for the restaurant equipment and the hood and the grease trap those are major you know major parts of a restaurant that cost a lot of money walk-ins you know uh, which we didn't have to come up with which is great. Did any of these pieces kind of like fall into your lap or where did you find the truck or how did the design build go? Well, initially I was pretty set on wanting a truck. Uh, I felt more comfortable just driving my little kitchen in somewhere rather than trying to pull it. Um, we went back and forth with what made more sense. And in the end it was a trailer because we don't have the maintenance of an engine on a trailer. Um, Of course, you have the maintenance of an engine of whatever you're pulling it with. But, you know, as far as insurance goes and everything expense wise, it just made more sense to go with a trailer. So kind of right when we had started to decide that was the direction that we were going to go into, a friend of ours said, hey, I found this trailer. I think it's right up your alley. You guys should really come check it out. So we went and it really checked a lot of the boxes that we needed. So um, it kind of both fell into our lap and... We were kind of seeking we were looking. something out. Yeah, we put that out in the universe, and so as as things you put out there, things come back to you. And uh, it was good timing. Now, was, was this a, a trailer that was like kind of already boned for a food truck, or was this like was. a camper trailer? No, it was, it was. We actually, it's funny. We started with an enclosed. Like my my cousin's a contractor, and so we started with his old contractor trailer. I'm thinking, oh insulated i can you know i watched all these videos on youtube of how to do it myself and when we found this i mean the amount of money that i was going to put into just the infrastructure we just spent on the truck and it was done and bam i got my nights and weekends with my family back (laughs) immediately so that was yeah it definitely it had the bones for sure but you know kind of like buying a house everything looks great on the outside and you get in you start ripping the walls apart and you go oh this is going to take a lot more time and money than we thought so Sure. How how long was sort of the manifesting period in the lead up to the truck? I mean, was it a couple month or a couple year process? I would say start to finish about a year. We've been, we've the always idea wanted, has we've been always there for years, truck, but yeah. as far as um, looking, looking, and uh, we had serious. I think one or two trucks ready to go. We, there was one that we were going to purchase. And he called us about ten minutes before and said, "We can't find the title anywhere." Is that I think we be called okay? him. I called and said. 
you have the title, right? And he said, oh, I, I my, can't find my it. friend that... has it. I'm like, uh, well, yeah. you call us back when you've got it, you know? Yeah. So just, you know, in talking to people and reading about what a hassle that was going to be to try to find a new title or, or apply for a new title, we just pulled the plug last minute. And so we had a couple situations like that where it almost was and then it wasn't. And but yeah, I would say about a year in total. When I think another thing that brought us to a trailer versus a truck was the size. We had more flexibility with uh, a trailer. A lot of the trucks that, you know, the Snap-on tools or the UPS truck, they're, they're all pretty much the same dimensions on the inside. And it was kind of limiting on what you could do in there. And as we found out yesterday, you're all, you're limited really by the space that you have. You know, she's working the cold side, I'm working the hot side, and we're kind of meeting in the middle to put our dishes together. And there's just not space like you have in a restaurant with a, you know, a huge cold side and a huge hot side to, to stack up plates and have you know, 15, 20 entrees going at once. We're, we're dealing with five tickets at a time and we just couldn't go any faster. So we got the best out of our trailer. I think that we could, but the truck I think would have been a little too small and, and seeing some other people's operations. I, I see why, uh, fried food and, and maybe burger. No, no, no disrespect for people that are doing burgers and fries, but it's a much simpler, easier process. And they probably have faster ticket times because it's just less. It's not as complicated. It's not, on the- it's not as complicated at all. What uh so on that what are you guys serving up in the in the trailer and what is the name of the food truck? The name of the food truck is Medley Food Co. And uh, I was really trying to bring the concept of a mobile bistro to life. So things that you would get in a restaurant or even you know home cooked um, to a food truck. So things like uh, we've got a Korean barbecue salad, which is amazing. I don't know. There's there's like a secret sauce if you've had like true Korean barbecue. Some of the places around town serve kind of their house sauce, but you got to ask for a special. And if you know, you know, because we're not going to cough it up. Can't Um, can't cough to it right now. We've got that. We had uh, steak chimichurri tacos on the menu, and those were killer. They really flew out the window last night. Um, There's a pasta salad with grilled chicken on top, turkey burger sliders. Chicken thighs are the way to go, by the way. (laughs) The turkey burger sliders were popular. Um, just again, kind of a new, fresh, healthier, uh, take on burgers and barbecue and that. Yeah. Kind of it sounds stuff. a little more gourmet than your average well, food we truck. We sold, That's I think 60 artichokes last night. So we're doing a half an artichoke with a great, her secret lemon aioli and people, those were just flying off the shelf. You don't see that at a food truck event. No, no. It does sound it's like real health. bistro yeah. fair. Yeah. And it's, uh, it sells great. Cause once people are walking through the crowd with it, you know, they're coming back. Where'd you get that artichoke? You know, it's, it's a great summer summer dish so so tell us about the uh, the setup in the trailer what kind of what kind of stations do you have and what kind of appliances are you using in there one of the you know as a as a restaurant designer i try to stay up with the latest things and just what people want what the trends are the biggest asset to chefs in the last probably five ten years has been the uh like low boy refrigerator under your cook line mm-hmm. So instead of twisting and turning, constantly grabbing your meat from the refrigerator on the cold side, putting it on the hot side, you can just reach down into the drawer, up comes your burger, your steak, your chicken, whatever, right onto your cooking appliance. So that was really important to us. Uh, And we do have that under our flat top. Uh, We went kind of simple with just flat top and charbroiler. You know, there are open burner options, but I, in my line of work, I see a lot of open burners being used for saute stations boiling water, prepping things, which we don't need. We are not prepping anything on the truck and we're not sauteing to order. So we have one, but we don't use it. We're actually thinking about putting something else there at this point, really keeping it simple. Um, sandwich prep. Three and then a sandwich prep. Her station just had a nice, uh, you know, refrigerated cold rail with storage below and then a tall refrigerator for our backups for both of us. Very small. I mean, you get, you start putting things in a food truck that are you know, 27 by 27 inches, 48 inches long. It, it, it fills up really quick. What are the dimensions of your trailer? Seven by 16, seven by 16. Yeah. So, so that doesn't leave much room in the width for two people and some it cooking stations. It it's actually three people. Cause we have a counter gal right now who just crushed it last night. Uh, I don't know where we would have been without her. She was hmm. a great face. She was very folksy. So a little shout out to her, but, um, Alba. our, our Alba, she uh with her on the truck and then chris and i it was tight but i've got to give it to chris the way that he designed it there was a really good flow of food and we weren't really in each other's way too much i mean we're married so we work 
pretty well together, <laughs> but uh, it was. You're kind of standing cool. in a 24 inch circle, and that's that's I was, your space. I, I'm imagining as you're explaining this, like the yellow square tape. It's like don't go outside your square. That's, that's <laughs> pretty it. much it was that, and you know it's funny that you say that because. It was like the minute things would start to get a little wonky was when we were getting out of our little dance space. It was like I'd reach over for tongs and he would turn around. And he actually burned me one time <laughs> with his tongs. And it was like, just stay put. And But we have to rush better. to the three compartment sink. So there's, you know, you got to get, make sure your cutting boards are staying clean and your knives are staying clean and your utensils are being swapped out regularly. So we're, you know, being uh, safety conscious. But no, it, it, it was really, it was really uh, a, a good event and i think we've learned a lot so you did. yeah just in one for day. anybody that listens to this and came to our event at feed the camel on wednesday expect more next time even though we did a good job that's a lovely <laughs> that's a cool little event too right on the river and shady it yeah, it it's really been is. our favorite for years we've been taking our kids there um since they were little and now our littlest one is enjoying it and it's just a really good family event um you know, and grownups too. There's margaritas there. And when well, the lines aren't crazy, like food truck Friday, where you're waiting in line for 45 minutes, you know, I think our ticket time was 20 minutes, but it just overall, it's a faster event. It's a little, little less, you know, busy. Yeah. For people More that friendly. aren't listening that are, are, are outside of Reno, we have a couple different food truck events. Um, and they're both like less than a mile away from yeah. each other. One's on Friday and one's on Wednesday during the summer. And uh, they're great events. So if you haven't checked them out, uh, Feed the Camels at the McKinley Arts Center on Riverside Drive, and then uh, Food Truck Friday, uh, Idlewild Park on Fridays. What I want to know with such a like limited square footage in the trailer, um, how much did your floor plan evolve once you had like locked in that vehicle? And did you kind of start with, hey, I'm a designer. I've got a top down view of how I'm going to maximize this. Or did, was there a big evolution once you kind of were committed to that size? He was, it was drawing within an hour of seeing the trailer. He was on his computer drawing. And yeah, the day I went and looked at it, I took measurements and, and brought them home so I could start laying things out to see if it would work. It was a, it was a pre-built uh, food truck. It was made in Mexico. So there was like the water tanks and the sinks were built in. Like that's where they were. The hotline and the gas was run and like that's where that was. So I was limited a little bit on on where that thing is, which in my line of work, my meat and potatoes is mom and pop shops. And most of those go into existing spaces. So that's a big part of my job is going in, locating existing utilities and kind of working with that. You know, if this is where the hood is and that's, we're not really going to move the whole kitchen to the other side of the building. So, um, I'm very familiar with how that works and you know, it just makes a lot of sense. I think I've got a pretty good eye for just walking in and seeing like, okay, this needs to go there. This is how this is going to go. And, you know, we are both classically trained chefs. We were both graduated Le Cordon Bleu 20 years ago. You know, she, I think she's closer to 20 years ago. I'm closer to 10, but. You just want to make me older than you and any You are older than me. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, we'll leave we'll leave that to be yeah. determined on another <laughs> podcast. Um, how, how did how does that uh, like a food truck build out differ from like a kitchen build, or is it really similar? Very similar in terms of equipment, but in a restaurant you've got floor plumbing, you've got um, you know wall plumbing is the same, but floor plumbing is different in a in a food truck. It, it's just such a smaller scale. There's no walk in. There's no I guess there's a hood. So it's, it's similar. It's just, it's just very, very, very small. And you're not looking at uh, beverage counter and front of house staff and how they interact and how the busser is going to bring a bus tub from table 27, get through to the, you know, to the dish area without being in people's way. So there's, there's just a lot more things to think about when you're designing a restaurant. We're on a food truck. Like, like we said, we know it's, we're standing in 24 inch circles and you really don't move. And it's, long. and it's a to go station pretty much. So you don't have to worry about those dishes coming back and how to exactly. clean all that and stuff. Exactly. And it sounds like the flow of, of the human traffic is like the biggest consideration, whether we're looking at a full restaurant or a uh, food truck or a kitchen. So how does this supply to your guys' kitchen at home? Do you guys have a, a flow in there that. We're not bit. allowed to be in the kitchen at the same time. Yeah, oh, we can't, we, we don't work well together. <laughs> Not at home anyway. We did great last night, but um, he actually designed our kitchen at home too. So that helps. Yeah. What was the consideration for the home kitchen? Uh, flat counter space. We didn't have, we did not have a very large space. And so I added some cabinetry to make it an island. I got rid of our pantry, which 
kind of moved to our garage. We have a, a lot of our backup stuff in the garage now, but it just it, flat space is super important in a kitchen. So you can have, especially in this day and age with home sous vide and home mm -hmm. convection ovens and air fryers and all of these things that people want to have on their counters, like flat space is really important without being too cluttered and, you know, still having space in front of it to work or put groceries down or make a drink or, you know, entertain, entertain. Exactly. And the kitchen is probably the biggest entertaining spot in the house. It's, it is. That's what they say. And having some sort of Island that people can gather around, I think is, is very important. Yeah. The social hub to make the kitchen kind of a welcoming area for everyone. Very much so. Very much. So. How did the economy and the pandemic halter or advance this project? I don't think it slowed the food truck down, really. No, if anything, gave us more time to think about what we wanted. Uh, gave us more time to plan the menu and just, I mean, it, it I don't want to say it helped necessarily, but it just, it kind of gave us more time, basically. That's the best I can answer that. But as My as business as Chris's completely business, dropped out yeah. for a, like a solid year. Nothing for a year. You know, nobody was doing anything. Anybody that I had contracts with and plans with, everything got put on hold. So um, yeah, it did give us a lot of focus. We, you know, I rehabbed a fishing boat and we, we spent a lot of time just daydreaming about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to spend our time and how we would balance that with our kids. And That was kind of the manifestation period. It really was. It really was. So... No, that's awesome. I mean, I think it was uh, a big time for a lot of people to recenter on their priorities, but it's cool to see how you guys applied that to a new business model that really works for you. Well, we're, I mean, everything has bounced back big, sure. which has also been great because finally when we were ready to pull the trigger, now we've got capital coming in that can finance all of these things and put the pieces together and month after month buy this and get this done and get this done and, you know, Ansel systems and you know, it's the fire suppression and um, just reworking everything to make it fit what we needed being made in Mexico. I had to like rework the whole gas lines because the fittings were an interesting thread pitch and okay. the gas lines were not necessarily something that is used here. So, uh, things have bounced back big time and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I've just, you know, that things are bouncing back and I've got work again, but also that it was enough to help get her food truck up and running. What was the most complex or interesting project you had in getting the truck ready? I think the most time consuming was the wood. Yeah, it's, it was aesthetics, believe it or not. Really? Um, yeah. She wanted was... wood on the outside and would not take no for an answer. <laughs> I just was really, you know, I had this vision in my head and we went back and forth with how we were going to do it and not add a ton of weight, which was another issue. There's so many things you don't think about. And he finally came up with a good idea and it, it came out better than I could have ever hoped for. So and we got a ton of compliments last night on the truck. So that was really cool. Can you describe to us what it kind of looks like from the outside? So there's a uh, an Asian method for preserving wood called shosugiban. And it's a burning method where you burn, you can, you can burn it to different levels. You can kind of char the outside a little bit where you're leaving like the peaks and the grain of the wood get black, but the valleys can stay a little, uh, you know, still pretty light uh, all the way up to just black, black, you know, charred. And then you go back over with a wire brush and kind of knock off all that carbon, if you will. Uh, and they, you know, I, th I think it's Japanese. Uh, they have buildings that are hundreds of years old, still made of this wood that are in great condition. It, it, from what I believe, it, it pulls the resin to the surface and seals it. Okay. So it's kind of insect proof. It's a little more fire retardant. It's more waterproof. And so we, we didn't want to go with the black black. We wanted to have kind of like how your table looks. It's just, you know, a very grainy, very grainy. Dark. So I had to, I got to buy a new toy. I bought a 35,000 BTU blowtorch. Nice. Oh, and fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stood out in the like, street and burned all the noise? way. It sounds like a jet engine. It's pretty it, nice. Yeah. I bet. He doesn't hate it. People driving by stare at me, but that's what we do. Hopefully we get some snow and you get to use it on that too. Yeah, right. <laughs> no more shoveling for me. <laughs> I was trying to use it on the weeds the other day and I was like, that's too much. That's that what you use it for. Uh, so that was, a, that was a big part of it. And it's, you know, it, it's sheet metal. So you're not just using wood screws to screw this thing on. I have to use a drill bit to get in there and then use self tapping screws and it does a lot of cutting and there's a flip up bar where people would come place their order that all the mounting brackets had to be accounted for and doors and hinges and 
Uh, that really took the longest time. But I think for the most part, cleaning it was big. The last people we bought it from left it kind of kind of grungy. It's never going to be as clean as you want it to be. Anything that you buy is never going to be as clean as That's you true. want it to be. So we got in there and did some serious elbow grease for a while. There's a little grunk and grime. There's a little grunk and grime. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Which we're kind of back to that after one night of service. So we'll yeah, just... exactly. I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what's the what's kind of after three intense hours of just cranking out dishes? What does the what does the cleanup look like? It it's supposed to look like you're in there for a while scrubbing it down, but last which you night, are in a we, restaurant once once yeah. you get going. We I hit mean... the deck last night. We <laughs> left a lot of it for today, so we cleaned up, you know, what we could and got home to the babies. We were very anxious to see the kids. You want to make sure your stainless steel is wiped down and that your product's rewrapped and so oxygen is not getting to things and oxidizing or drying things out. So we'll we'll get in a little better regimen. It was it was we forgot money. We were like ready to open it. I'm like, oh, we have no bank. So last minute, I had to run to the bank and get you know. Which is such a rookie thing, you know. Again, both of us have been in the service industry for years and years and years, and it's like you just don't know what you don't know, and you you get in there. And it was like the dumbest thing. I mean, we remembered everything. We were so proud of ourselves. And then last second, last second, he says, we don't have a bank. And I'm like, go, go, go. <laughs> so it worked out. Is this both your first venture into like the food truck concept? Yes. For the most part, yes. I've worked uh, with people who have had food trucks. Um, in fact, a friend of ours has Mr. Margarita, really cool little green truck. I love I that just, truck. Yeah, it's, it's the best. <laughs> Great margaritas. Um, so I worked with him over the years and was actually just at Riverfest with him. And uh, so I've been in kind of the food truck atmosphere for a long time, but this is definitely a whole new ball game. Because it's your baby now. It's my baby now, yeah. 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 Which made working in 128 degree heat. It was 128 bearable. on the truck. Yeah, it was night. a warm day yesterday. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. a trial I'm by standing fire. standing over three feet of one inch thick plate steel that's just smoking hot. So it just carries the heat. So yeah didn't stop people though is um, your guys's plan to keep running this yourselves or kind of staff it out from time to time with chris already having a full-time career the plan is to find someone to you know replace him um yes yes sure. yeah we're gonna try to staff <laughs> that a little bit i will always be on the truck um i'll always need a counter person i hope that's alba forever because she again just killed it but um i'm gonna be looking for a good right hand man to to replace Chris when it's time so that he can go back to focusing on what he's doing. But I will always be there. Hey guys, Drew from the Appliance Educator Podcast here, and I just wanted to take a minute out to talk about our amazing sponsor, Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. You've heard the guests and the hosts talk about this amazing brand and all the attainable luxury that they create right here in the heart of Lake Tahoe, USA. From freestanding ranges to ventilation, dishwasher and microwave, to everything you'll need to complete your next bathroom project, Z-Line Kitchen and Bath is bringing luxury into your next project. And on that point, what's uh, things you said things are picking up on the commercial kitchen design. Very much. Yeah. What's kind of uh, some cool projects that you have in the works on that? Mm, uh, Boomtown Casino is opening a new location right in that same area, right, right between them and Cabela's. Mm. More of a locals casino. I think they're trying to drive, you know, a little higher quality food there. Mel's does really well for them. Uh, you know, they've got a great steakhouse there, but they wanted to do a good diner with good value, uh, kind of, kind of the, you know, the food that we're doing on our truck. Uh, so that is going to be going in. All those homes being built right there too. All those homes being built out there. Exactly. I think they saw the that happening and that spurred a lot of things on. Although construction costs, I was told the architect on that project told me there's no concrete in Reno. Really? Even the, the factories like out in Fernley that mix everything and, and supply the dry mixes can't get, you know, supplies. So it's not just metal and it, it's everything. It's it's everything in our world right now is in short supply. Everybody's driving as fast as they can to this, but it's, it's, it's this crazy storm of like demand is super high and supply is super low. And so prices are through the roof. The kitchen equipment has gone up. You know, most of the companies that I work with have gone up 15% in June. That's, you know, not just supply and demand. That's their raw steel materials, stainless steel costs have gone up. Yeah, raw materials seem to be on the rise everywhere. Like m- most lumber seems to have doubled in it, the last year, oh, at really? least. Oh, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but Incline Bowling Alley is getting a facelift. Oh, wow. They yeah. have a new owner. That place is 
a time machine. You walk in there, it's like 1962. Not anymore. <laughs> Not These anymore. guys have great plans. They've got great uh, you know, lighting and stuff going in. They've, they've, we put a great kitchen in. We're working with uh, Sam Choi, who's a, a great chef from Hawaii. He's got a lot of food trucks, and he does a lot of poke up in Seattle and oh, Hawaii awesome. and kind of on the West Coast. So he helped me put together the, the menu together, new bars. Um, what else am I working on? Ranchero. Lots of places. Lots of stuff going into Ranchero. Yeah, that place is just growing by the day. It's yeah. a beautiful property, too. Yeah. It really is. And there's a, a lot cool of food. So I did Grafted, which is a high-end cocktail wine bar with small bites. Uh, Chewy's Mexican food is going in there. They're opening a new location with a big Al Pastor machine. That's his big thing he wants to do is Ooh. just to oh, awesome. play with the Al Pastor. Uh, Hanoki Sushi is opening a quick serve poke restaurant with a very fine dining courses type menu that'll be open for dinner only in the back. Oh, cool. So kind of a multi-use space. Uh, Centro is opening another location out there. Oh, who am I forgetting? Got a lot of irons on the fire right now, baby. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a butcher shop that's going in there. I actually have a meeting this afternoon with them. Fit Eats is a cool project. Fit Eats is in Sacramento. What uh, is the, vi- the Village Well is another like pour your own beer kind of a place. Kind of uh, like where you small, have the wristband. Where you... Yeah, exactly. You get you buy, you load up a car, and then you go kind of pour your own beer. So all those are going into Ranchera. Um Shout out to all those folks. They are great people and they, you know, have, have good track records. And then like Christy just mentioned, Fit Eats is a, a f- meal delivery service out of Sacramento. And so they deliver up to here. They deliver down to L.A. Oh, wow. The new owner has kind of taken over and wants to really grow their business. So I'm working with ceiling machines and just. Uh, what kind of kitchen does that take to kind of produce that mass amount of prep? It takes it takes larger bulk cooking equipment so like a tilt skillet i don't know if a lot of people know what a tilt skillet is but it's it's basically a big square pot that the bottom gets hot so you can use it to cook bacon and fry things in the bottom you can fill it with 30 gallons of chili if you wanted to oh wow and everything in between so you can braise in it you can make rice in it so they've got you know one of those a big double oven huge charbroilers flat tops and basically during the day they're prepping all the all you know all the meats and vegetables all the components uh, we're putting a 30 foot I say maybe even longer than that 30 foot walk-in in that has uh, like convenience style doors convenience store where you would just be able to open it up and get drinks so a lot of that prepped items instead of going in the big man door and letting all that cold air come out they can reach into these smaller doors the night crew comes in grabs their components goes out to one of the I think we have 20 plus tables. So they, they can go out to their own table. They have a scale. They weigh these things out with their, you know, their purchase order. So they've got 50 or 30 or 25 of these, you know, meals to prep and they prep them up and then they go back in those doors. Uh, she's using dry ice and little kind of disposable insulated bags to deliver them in. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting process. She was trying to get a bakery going, but a lot of counter space. Yeah. Cause a lot it's of plating and pre-made vacuum sealed macro intensive meals exactly yeah so a ton of prep space a ton of prep space yeah what's the square footage on the facility of that she's going from 2500 to 5000 wow. which is more than what she needs and she knows that but she wants to grow her business and so she's, she's being very smart about um kind of getting kind of jumping into the deep end like we do with the food truck to make sure that she's got room to grow and you know, bringing in refrigerated trucks and she'll probably do something else in LA eventually. Uh, labor is a big thing we haven't really talked about yet in the, in the kitchen world. You know, a lot of people are looking at ways to minimize labor. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Everybody wants these $15 an hour jobs, but if it doesn't pencil out on paper with the way that the pricing, you know, what the general public's willing to pay for something, then you have to cut hours back. And so I, that's been a big focus. A lot of cook and hold units um a lot of is there some kind of like automation coming to a kitchen to you near soon um there's automation out there i haven't taken a real big look at it again my meat and potatoes is a lot of mom and pop shops Mm -hmm. and so that's you're gonna see that in mcdonald's and large corporations larger larger things i i don't quite trust the robotic side of it yet you know, if I want a medium rare burger, does it know where the hotspot is? 
on the griddle? Does it, you know, is it going to be able to, to sensor? Eventually, I'm sure they will, the way mm -hmm. AI is going. But uh, I haven't delved too much into that. But, the, you know, there's, there's equipment out there that you can put in a frozen product and leave, and it will thaw it and cook it to the proper temperature and then hold it at that temperature without overcooking it. So when you come in in the morning, you could have 30 prime ribs that went from the freezer to being completely cooked and ready for a buffet service, which is, which is pretty cool. There's no thawing. There's no trimming. I'm thinking of like a big lasagna when you're talking about that. I'm like, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> same thing, same thing. You know, uh, blast chilling has been a big thing that is huge in Europe where you've got, uh, basically a big compressor and a huge fan. This it's like a super refrigerator that just draws the heat out of anything. So you're able to, for, for safety standards, you want to make sure that you're bringing your food down to temp from cooking down to as cold as you can to before you put it in the walk-in or your, you know, your regular refrigeration, because a regular refrigerator, as soon as you put something hot in there, the whole refrigerator heats up and now everything that's in there potentially goes into compromised. the danger zone. And so uh, in Europe, they have these things all over the place that just sit on a counter. And as you're, you know, taking things off the grill and you need to cool them before service, you just put it right in there. So that might be something fun for Z-Line to, to think about. I think you guys have some, something similar to that. Yes. Maybe not, maybe not a blast chiller, but we're z -Line's getting ready to launch refrigeration this year and kind of complete the kitchen suite. But um, yeah, always a bunch of ideas in the works. I think refrigerated <laughs> for... drawers and heated drawers are something I've seen in some, a lot of, a lot of places where I see your equipment also. Um, keeping a heated drawer that matches the cabinetry is, yeah. a, is a beautiful option. We did a, a catering in Tahoe for that, and we were able to keep a lot of our tortillas and, and other items in that drawer to keep them warm for service, which was nice. And then having a refrigerated drawer below, maybe a countertop, you know, workstation would be just like a regular kitchen where you can kind of pull from below. Try to maximize that counter space. Exactly. And, yeah, and have everything ready for you. Yeah. Where do you guys see the truck going now that it's open? Um, what's the the near the near future plans and the extended future plans? We're going to be doing the Wednesday night food truck event all through summer. Uh, in July, we're going to be doing a lot of HOAs. That's kind of a new thing. Oh, cool. Uh, where you know the association has people come out for the community and a lot of places have like a little pool or something in their you right. know, in their area and they. So we're going to be doing a lot of those. We're not quite taking on anything like weddings just yet. We're mm. not necessarily, excuse me, not necessarily saying no to them. Just kind of depends on how many people would be there. But we w we really want to do this right and just start off slow, get our feet under us, kind of see where it takes us, and you know hit it harder and harder as we gain momentum. Well, we've got a, we've been being in the industry for as long as we have. We have a lot of connections, and so immediately you know a friend of mine. Paul Ganser opened a bar up in the North Valleys and he's going to start trying to have people out food trucks on Thursday nights and do like the only North Valleys kind of food truck thing. And so we were approached by them. Uh, my cousins own the Frey Ranch in Fallon and they do distilling, they do wine. I mean, they have world-class yeah, spirits. That whiskey is delicious. And they're doing like a single barrel like release this Saturday. And so they've invited us out there for that. That's going to be a great event. We've been looking forward to that for a while. Yeah. We're so excited that we have the truck ready for it too. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Especially now that everybody is hungry to go out and do something. It like, is. It, and it's so great to see everybody out. I mean, just the two events alone, the food truck events that are going on right now, Wednesdays and Friday nights, just to see the energy of people being so excited to be out in the fresh air with other humans. And, you know, they're two such great events, um, you know, large great and small locations. scales. But mm -hmm. And great locations. Yeah. There's just, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. Everyone's definitely excited to be outside. Like they, I'm seeing more of my events stuff be, how can I keep doing shows, but take cater it to be outside and mm -hmm. get creative on those, uh, new venue ventures. And right. yeah. So I, I definitely see that where people are more anxious to be outside and not just to go out. We got to work mm -hmm. on a collaboration, Nick. We do. Get, yeah. us, get us at your ne next event. Man. I got a couple for you. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Making things happen. Yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. Um, I wanted to know too, Chrissy, I we've checked out some of your awesome content on YouTube and I just kinda wanted to know like where that project came from or what inspired that and how you got started doing cooking content on YouTube. That would start with my good friend Kat. Um, he started a he's in Texas 
he started a home cooks club uh, page. One of the better home cooks I've ever seen. I mean, the man's a chef. He refuses to go by that, but he is. He's just extremely creative. And um, he started this uh, Facebook page a few years ago now with the idea that it was home cooks doing cool things or, you know, professionals doing cool things. And everybody's in this group together posting things and posting pictures and recipes and ideas and whatnot. It's super positive. Like no one's stingy with the recipe. If they post something, they are willing to share it and oh, tell yeah. you how to make it. No and secrets there. It's, it's um, a great page. So he asked a couple of us if we would be willing to do some YouTube uh, content. I was very nervous at first. And next thing I know, I'm there with lighting equipment and a microphone in my own little house and doing stuff. And it was a lot of fun. So that's kind of where that started. And I don't know. I'm sure I'll do more in the future. Just kind of fell back to focus on the food truck a little bit. But the Home Cooks Club on Facebook, it's a great page. What were some of the um, most interesting home cook recipes that people have put on there? Oh, gosh. Um, It's hard to say specific dishes, but there's definitely people to look for. So George Hearn being one of them, that guy, anything he posts is just like, how did he do that? He has no limits on what he wants to cook, but he will take, I feel like he takes like a whole day and like researches it and writes notes and like, because he'll, he'll post pictures of his progress, you know, as he's cooking and he just comes out with anything and everything you could think of. He just, yeah, his, whatever he's hungry for, he'll make. His stuff is just beautiful. But, you know, there's, there's, there's bakers. That. That yeah, there's bakers. Amazing there's, bakery, there's baked bakers goods. that are just amazing. There's a lady, I think, I think I could be t- totally wrong, but I think she's out of Europe and she bakes these most amazing rustic breads. And it just puts everybody to shame that, mm. <laughs> like us, we were posting pictures of our bread. No offense, dear. Your breads were My beautiful, bread was but terrible. she just <laughs> has these incredible <laughs> breads. Um, but then you have, you know, people like that, and then you have other people who are posting their pot roast and potatoes or their broccoli casseroles, and it's just like equally mouthwatering. You know, everybody's kind of doing their thing, and you see trends though. It's, it's funny. And Somebody will post something, and all of a sudden, like within a week, there's like five more, which we is great through. because it, you know it's, you're constantly. <laughs> yeah. Christy's been our our chef at home from the get go. You know, she's been. In, Stay at home mom, among among other things, but that's really her forte. She cooks dinner every night, and so she um, has to come up with stuff. Like, I, I don't know how she does it, you know, keeping the menu interesting for us. It's and such it's a nice creative have, outlet. So. That it, is. <laughs> it is, but it's nice to have a place that you can look at food and be like, oh, I haven't done that in a while, or oh, let's let's do enchiladas tonight, or you know, really, really kind of try to find inspiration in all kinds yes. of places. Do but. you have some favorite dishes right now that you're excited about making? Um. Well, now I want enchiladas, now that you said that. I was doing like a, um, what was the, what were the enchiladas that I made last time? I made like a whole sauce for the chicken before I even put it in there. But anyway, just that's rambling. But um, favorite dishes at home. She does great we tri-tip. Do. She, I do most of the grilling, but yeah. she does the tri-tips. I've become the tri-tip queen. Pull them at 138, I swear. We pull them at 138. That is the key, it's yes. The key. Uh, good meat thermometer. Oh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank here. I, you know, it's it's simple when it comes to home stuff. It's tacos, it's spaghetti, it's, you know. It's I, done well, I though. use a lot of fresh ingredients. Yeah, I, I try to not skimp on fresh ingredients. Um, things that my mom made, so lots of pastas. Um, I grew up in the kitchen with my mom, so we'll have um, kind of a charcuterie board night where everybody gets to just come by and kind of graze and pick, and we'll put a movie on, and the kids like that one. Nobody's forced to eat on that night. Uh, what am I forgetting? I don't know. I'm just kind of a robot these days with <laughs> the home cook. Well, I think we're about running out of time here, but um, I want everyone to be able to find you guys in the Melody Food Truck Co. So give us uh, how to find you guys in, in both the Chris, if someone has a, a kitchen rebuild that they need or they need a food truck, how do they get a hold of you guys? So we're medleyfoodco.com. Uh, you can definitely reach us there. We've got a Facebook page and Instagram. Um, if you see us out and about, we have a QR code right on the side of the trailer. So you can just pop that up and we'll definitely be at every Wednesday night event. Um, probably not in food truck Fridays this year. Um, the deadline is kind of passed and it's a little rich for our blood right now. We're going to give the pros a chance to, uh, 
knock it out of the park this year and then we'll be in next year but we'll be um at these hoas and hopefully some bars coming up here we'd like some to get concerts in. perhaps in the near future too cool. anything yeah, and sky's everything the, limit. the sky's the limit that's yeah. that's really why we like having the food truck and being mobile as we can you know, we've got a couple of camping trips planned for the end of the year but other than that you we'll just gotta up. throw we'll rooftop tents on top of the trailer, and then you have your kitchen and out. your camping all in one. Don't yeah. give him any ideas. <laughs> you would totally do that. Well, and I'm sure the rest of this year is going to be just jam packed with people ready to re-enter society yeah. and actually yeah. socialize. Yeah. And great. and where can we find you on YouTube? On YouTube is the Home Cooks Club, and you can just kind of type in my name, and it'll pull me up there. Christy Thompson. Christy. Thompson? No H C R C R I S T Y. Yes. And then my business is Atlas Kitchen Concepts, and that's just all spelled out, atlaskitchenconcepts.com. Uh, phone number, contact information is all on there. Do jobs large and small, a lot of casino work, a lot of mom and pops, you know, out of state, in state. I've been in Texas and Idaho, California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, so West Coast, but I'll go anywhere. So. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for your time today. I'm sure this is both some really exciting content here on the cast, but also just to encourage our whole audience to go check you guys out online and see all the cool things you're working on. Great. So thank you both so much for your time today. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. Yeah, thank you. pleasure, guys. Yeah, thanks. This has been the Appliance Educator Podcast, brought to you by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow at Appliance Educator for more tips and tricks and advice to keep your home running at optimal performance. If you have any ideas or topics you'd like to hear on future episodes of the show, leave us a comment. Appliance Educator, signing off.